Welcome to In Touch, Think STEM Career Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Ayo Olufade, exploring the evolving world of science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics in underrepresented community that include Blacks, Indigenous, and the people of color. STEM is important in our community because our health, economy and future depend on the solid foundation and innovation and our people's participation in the STEM field. As the field of STEM, as STEM field continues to evolve, this, post this podcast will attempt to connect with men and women who are champions of STEM education and career in the STEM field to bring about awareness to the benefit of STEM career in our underrepresented community, and also gain insight to inspire and support the creation of innovation or, and also innovative solution that will enable sustainable development that will contribute to a positive change in our community through our active participation in innovation in the STEM field. Today, I am honored and privileged to have on my podcast, In Touch Think STEM Career, Ms. Monique Wilson, the director of the James Richmond Science Center here in Charles County, Maryland. Welcome, Ms. Monique. Ms. Well, hello. Thank you so much for having me. It's so good to see your face again. Um, we miss you. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you guys too. <laughs> I, well, I miss you guys too. Uh, you were my supervisor. Uh, I know uh, when I first began working for Charles County Public Schools, uh, you by then you were actually uh, the uh, the content specialist uh, for the science office. Then um, you were promoted to become the director uh, of uh, the James Richmond uh, Science Center. And you have been there for the past 10 years. What a phenomenal well, journey. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the unique things that I, I really, you were my mentor and I know I have I've worked for you even after uh, you've moved to the Science Center. Um, you know, I was really impressed with the fact that uh, you are a woman of color and, you know, the all the initiative, you know, that you cheered and you championed while you were actually uh, a content uh, specialist and even uh, at the Richmond Center, uh, you know, bring in the, you know, the STEM teachers back uh, to participate in all the activities that, uh, you know, that you do. Uh, that is really motivating and very inspirational uh, to me. So when I started this podcast, uh, I thought about, okay, uh, in my community, uh, who are the people, you know, who are the champions, who are the people that are really doing phenomenal things? And the first person that came to my mind was you. And uh, I'm so happy that you are on this podcast. Uh, number one, uh, to encourage especially young girls, uh, you, hopefully your story, uh, them hearing you um, and seeing all the phenomenal work that you have done, hopefully this will inspire many young girls and many young people of color uh, to really take interest, right. uh, you know, in the STEM field. I hope you agree with me. I do. And I'm not sure if I actually shared my whole story with you. Yeah, I would um, like to hear that if you don't mind. Can you, how did you begin? How did you got interested in, in STEAM or in STEM? Okay, so... Um, my first spark happened when I was in fourth grade. We had to pick a content to make a presentation. So our fourth grade teacher was really adamant about teaching us how to speak in public. So I picked ecology 
as my subject. And as I researched that project, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so great, you know, living things and plants. And, you know, I remember I made this um, big storybook and I based it off of the soap as the world turns and it was wow. as the earth turns. Like who knew, right? <laughs> who knew? Yeah, yeah. So I was always really good in science but I struggled in math. Okay. So when I started thinking about college, I thought, mm, I'm going to be an English teacher because I wanted to be a teacher. Um, I like science, but everyone said science and math go together, you know? So it's that underlying discouragement that yeah. people plant in students and they don't realize mm. that they are planting it. Wow. So I was like, I want to be a teacher, so I'll teach English. I like reading. You know, I like writing. Well, that settled with me about fourth, fifth grade. Mm -hmm. Got to middle school, still struggled in math. I took the higher level classes because, you know, all my friends were in the higher level math classes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I could squeak out a C plus, a B, it was fine. It was fine for my parents because they weren't really, oh, you have to have 4.0 type of parents. Yes. If they were, you want to be a well-rounded person Absolutely. type of parent. Yeah. And we were very um, religious. So being a good Christian was the yeah. number one priority. And hmm. school was like, as long as you're doing your best, we're okay with it. Hmm. So fast forward to high school, um, Monique wasn't making the best choices. And before I turned 17, I had two thing. kids. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I had two kids. Yes. So the guidance counselor encouraged me to get a tutor, um, stay home. And I'm like, no, I'm coming back to school. I mean, I was class president. I was in the student council, you know, so it was one of those things that I just wouldn't take no for an answer. Yes, wow. I made big mistakes, but those mistakes were some of the best things could have happened to me. So I went to college. I went to college on time. I majored in English. First semester, straight A's. Second semester, writing those papers and trying to raise two babies under the age of three wow. started to kick my tail. That must have been so I said, yeah, I said, I am not quitting. Mm -hmm. What can I teach that doesn't require so many papers? And that's how I rotated back to science because a lot of the classes you had the content and then you had the lab hours so i just made my schedule where i dropped the kids off at daycare i'd go to my classes i made sure my labs were during daycare hours i struggled in math my parents paid for math tutors so that the whole time i was there my dad paid for a math tutor to get me to stay in the sciences because the math was hard yeah. And so that's how my journey started in STEM. So I came out, I was a middle school science teacher. I loved middle school. I mean, yeah. most people kind of are like, oh my gosh. But it was great because the kids were curious. They asked questions yeah. and I wasn't a big talker. So I started that concept of the flipped classroom a long time ago. We did labs three days out of a week. Wow. And then we did the checking for understanding and we did a lot of the paperwork of science. They did it for homework. Wow. And then we came in and then we talked about what they should have done at home. We fixed our mistakes and we got right into a lab activity because wow. I never wanted to be one of those teachers that stood up there and talked to kids for 80 yeah. minutes. Like, right. Right. no. So that's how my journey in STEM started. That is a remarkable story. Uh, that was actually a remarkable story. Impressive story. Uh, you're very resilient. Um, very, very resilient. Having a child, uh, having two children, and uh, and still, you know, persevering through all of that challenges. So I also may, I, I, I wonder, I see a common thread same kind of experience that a lot of young girls, a lot of young people in our community go through. Um, 
So do you want to talk about that? I mean, relate that to your experience. Um, well, the thing with me is I know, even though I don't own it, I know I have a stubborn streak. Okay. And so when I feel something that I can do something, it's like, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, but we're going to make it. Yeah. But one thing I can share with young women, when you make a mistake and you feel shunned and shamed because it was tough. Like, you know, I was a cheerleader. I was this, I was that. And it's like, I lost most of my friends in mm. making that decision because my, my parents wanted me to put my, my first daughter up for adoption and I refused. And so the boy's mom said, well, if you put this baby up for adoption, I'm going to have grandparents' rights and I'm going to take this baby. Well, the baby's dad lived three streets away from me. So when the leaves fell off the trees, right. we could see each other's houses. Mm -hmm. So it was like, well, you're not going to have this child. So I opted to become an emancipated minor and would on public assistance. And then shortly later the next baby came because you know still teenagers unsupervised yeah. but the common thread is don't give up if you make a mistake and you know it's a mistake and it's not your character reach out there are resources that you have around you and if somebody tells you no go to the next adult mm -hmm. because somebody is going to have an idea an answer you know you just don't give up and think that you're done because I will never forget this guidance counselor. I walked into him my senior year and I wanted my transcripts. Mm. And he was like, you're not going to just stay home? No, sir, I'm not. Seriously? Oh, I thought you would go to the community college. No, I'm going to a four-year school because I want to be a teacher. Mm. Yeah. Oh, so no. I had a cousin hey, hey. who was a lawyer and she helped me with the paperwork and the fees and the this. So the thing of it is don't let someone discourage you. Hmm. It seemed impossible. I didn't really know how I was gonna actually pull the whole thing off, but the first step, take the first step. So I got accepted. Hmm. Then when I got accepted, I was like, oh, where am I gonna get this money from? I can't live on campus. I've got babies, I, you know? So then it was just do the financial aid packet. Hmm. Well, unbeknownst to me, being an emancipated minor with dependents, I was poor. Hmm. So I got the Pell Grant and I got the OIG and I got the Senator scholarship because my grades were still good. Right. You know, and I went on public assistance. I got an apartment next to campus. I learned how to ride the bus and we just worked it out. So cool. it's you just, if you want something, you may be derailed because it took me five years to get out. Yes. But you can still do it. Just don't give up on the first mistake. That's really a sound advice. Uh, I really uh, I really feel like uh, uh, a lot of young girls, I don't know what uh, their experience is at this point. Uh, right. I believe that hearing you take a, I mean, talk about your experience and how you were resilient and how you persevere uh, to become the director. I mean, that's a big deal of the Science <laughs> Center here in Charles County. I mean, that is a remarkable, that is an incredible uh, a story. Uh, and I and that can be the story of every young girl or every young man in our community, uh, literally. But I also see the importance of parents, the support system that you yes. have. Um, so, and that is also another reason why I'm doing this show, because I have really this uh, fundamental belief that parents, parental involvement. Uh, it is crucial. You it's want to so talk crucial. about that? Uh, yeah. So, um, and not just like making bad life mistakes, does this apply? This also applies in the classroom. Like when I have students come to me from other schools, first of all, it's amazing to see those kids' faces light up when they get off the bus and I see them and they see me and we have our moment. Mm -hmm. And so when they're in the classroom or they're doing something, you know, you can see 
the unsurety or they're especially some of the girls are like, well, I'm not supposed to be good at this. I'm like, mm, who told oh. you that? <laughs> well, you know, studies show that boys are better at math than girls. Mm. But, um, so who do you think paid for those studies? <laughs> That's a good one. I love it. Right. That. And then it. they look at me like, hmm. <laughs> so, so this is what we're going to do. I said, we're going to try. And you don't have to be perfect. Right. I said, because nobody is perfect. Right. And then if we fail, we're going to do it again. Because yeah. so many things in science were mistakes. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and that takes so much pressure off, you know, and I just feel like dialogue needs to shift in the classrooms. Um, I have a heart for helping parents because I see that if you're not inside of a school district and know the inner workings, it can be very, very intimidating. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, just ask another question. Like the first answer, they're going to kill you with acronyms and make you feel like you don't know what, what they're talking about. Hmm. Ask a clarifying question. Yeah. And then ask a third question. You know, and as parents, we have to be advocates for our students because they're the best thing that we have that we're sending to school and hmm. we want the best for them. Yes. And it's frustrating. It is so frustrating. But at the end of the day, our kids are all that we have because we are responsible for our kids being successful adults, not the teachers in the classroom. True. true. Statement. And I feel like sometimes we get it twisted. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so parents have got to, even if it's just a little bit, like you don't have to be the homeroom mom, right? but you could just like pop in for 15 minutes and this is a well-known secret. When I was in the classroom, my high maintenance parents, I adopted those kids. Like, and it's terrible. But when you have 37 kids, like the easy ones, they come along. The harder ones, you've got to dig in and treat them like your own or you're going to lose them. You know? And so when the kids that are struggling and they have those parents that we call high maintenance parents All right they keep you honest absolutely you know <laughs> and then they in do. those classes that those parents kept me honest right we were rocking and rolling you <laughs> know because like i had to give so much more to make sure i was involving everybody I See, couldn't leave anybody is, in the <laughs> what i was saying that miss wilson is sharing a secret to moms and parents yes <laughs> yeah you have to become a high maintenance. My kids' high school, the secretaries knew my voice when I said good morning. You know, it's because I just I just checked in. And it wasn't always negative. I would go up and have coffee for everybody and say, you know, how's your morning going? Yeah. You know, or after school, dismissal, pop in, you know, just call the teacher, hey, how are things? And I personally, being in the classroom, I had to schedule it. Like it had to be, oh, you have to call this teacher today. You know, having four kids, that's a lot of teachers. Yeah. And so I would put them on my calendar just so they could hear my voice every other month. So as parents, they have to let us know that we're there. Excellent. Thank you. That's a great advice. Uh, one thing, uh, before I start to, uh, talking to you or asking you a question about the James, uh, enrichment Science Center. I have another question that I wanted to ask you based on your life experience. And I see this um, a lot and I read a lot about it. Even right now that I teach STEM, I teach math class. A lot of the time, a lot of my students basically give up, especially in math. What is it about math and uh, you know, it's, uh, let me just speak in terms of uh, the black population. Uh, is there something in our, I mean, in our experience that basically causes us to feel like we are not good in math? Um, is there something that we as educators and even the parents, I love the fact that 
your parents actually hired you a tutor mm -hmm. to support you. I mean, do you want to speak on that? I mean, because this could be real, because I see this, um, and, and I know you have read this too, one of the reasons why there is also a low representation of our people in the STEM field is those foundational, you know, courses like the math. Once they get, you know, this courage and they feel they really cannot succeed in it, so they give up. So, I mean, what's your take, perspective on that? Okay, so th this is my perspective. I see three, four, five, six-year-olds here at the Science Center. And our kids are on point with their math. That discouragement comes from, I feel, two places. One, it's the teachers in third and fourth grade. They teach that math one way. They're teaching to the test. Hmm. They're not understanding brain development of those students at that point. And there's not enough differentiation, all right? At those ages, especially African-American males, they are physically squirming. Hmm. So if you have a kid that's in math and he's not paying attention because he's squirming, he's missing what you're teaching off of that whiteboard. So does he need to stand up? Does he need more manipulatives? You know, it's not the ability, it's that negative feedback that they get in a, like a few years and it tells them that they can't do it when they can't actually do it. The second thing is a lot of public schools use math as a gatekeeper. Wow. My second son was the victim of this. He was good in math. He had some bumpy times in fifth and sixth grade. Got him a tutor. He was incorrectly placed in Algebra 1 in eighth grade, because most kids usually take that in high school. He was doing fine. A teacher was like, man, my class is full. So they start going through records, okay? It was him and another kid that was misplaced according to the tracking, but they were, they were making it. They weren't making A's but they were misplaced. So they need to go back to whatever the eighth grade math would have been, the non-college prep math. So it's the not giving the kids a chance to learn the way they need to learn. And I also feel like too, like just because the kid is not knocking it out the park, let them stay, let them learn, you know, let them try it. And then if they have to take it again, fine. And it's no harm, no foul, you know, and I just, it's the structure of the education system. There's no room for failure. There's not a lot of room for reteaching. Hmm. You know, it's like you have to fit, you know, it's like putting a round thing in a square peg. Yeah. Kids are individuals yeah. and a kid might lag behind in third grade, but something happens, they mature fifth grade. If they had the opportunity to take the higher math, they would be there because some of the discouragement comes from, and they were misplaced when they were younger. Yeah. They got bored. They checked out. So then they missed some important connecting pieces to help them understand that math. So I refuse to believe it's an innate ability because we are very brilliant people. Yeah. We have just let people get in our heads and tell us that we can't do it. Hmm. And that is that is why the involvement of parents is extremely important. Absolutely. Yeah. I see, I definitely see the connection, right? Especially mm -hmm. the impact, the support system that you had. I mean, it, it, to me, I feel it was very, very pivotal. In okay, your... so, however, okay. let me clarify, because, you okay. know, <laughs> folks watching this will have that dialogue. Well, okay. her parents probably this and her parents probably that. No, my parents were high school graduates. <laughs> that is it. That is all. They didn't understand the math that I was struggling with, but mm. they understood they couldn't help me. So they found somebody else who could. That so. is extremely important. That is extremely important. Uh, thank you so much for that uh, clarifying. Uh, that is very important. Now let's talk about 
uh, the reason why we're here. Which right. is, <laughs> so you are the director of the, uh, you know, of the James E. Richmond uh, Science Center here in, um, excuse me, let me make sure I am sharing the correct Science Center here in, um, in Charles County. So um, how long have you been the director of the Science Center here in Charles County? Uh, first of all, can you tell us what it is, uh, and please? Yes, okay, so the James E. Richmond Science Center is uh, located on the campus of St. Charles High School in Waterford, Maryland. And we are an experiential learning center that's used as an instructional tool for the students of Charles, St. Mary, Calvert, and Prince George's County. So our daytime function is a place for students to come to be immersed in hands-on uh, science education. Uh, we have a planetarium, one of the largest in the state of Maryland. We have a science on a sphere, and that's NOAA technology. And we have um, an inquiry lab where the students go and spend time with us doing hands-on scientific experiments, exploring, um, just having a good old time. The Discovery Lab is my favorite place, mm -hmm. although the planetarium is pretty cool too. Okay. So we are an instructional tool at the daytime level, and then in the evening, we're a place for the community to come and gather and experience fun, scientifically-based educational uh, programs. So uh, in regards to uh, your location, where are you located again, uh, please? We, we are located at 5305 Park Piney Church Road in Waldorf, Maryland. Okay. So it's on the campus of St. Charles High School, but we have our own side of the school. So um, we were just being, I guess, uh, cost-effective putting two things in the same place on the same piece of land. That is, very, yeah, I, I remember that. Uh, but I think that that is uh, a, a good strategy, actually, um, personally. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, one of the things that I wanted to ask is you mentioned uh, that, you know, you also serve St. Mary's and Calvert County. Um, so it's not just you know Charles County, but there are other community in the south, in, in, you know, in Southern Maryland that you all the community that you serve, correct? Correct. So we have teachers uh, from the surrounding counties that have uh, science indicators that they would like to cover, and they just don't have the right approach or the tools, and so they'll contact us and say we have these three indicators that we need what do you have for us? Mm -hmm. And so um, because we are all Maryland schools and we work off of the same curricular document, okay. uh, we are able to help them out with some of their lessons. And okay. when the private, we call them private schools or other schools, because we have our Charles County schools, and then we have our, our outside, uh, they come and they spend anywhere between three to five hours with us. So we do a a more intensive um, experience with them. Okay. Um, our students in Charles County, they have the privilege of coming to us uh, from kindergarten all the way to fifth grade. So they know that at least once a year, they're gonna come to the Science Center. And then in the middle school, um, we service the eighth grade and we do a full-blown planetarium lesson to cover all those indicators that they have for eighth grade. And then we have um, high schools that schedule private trips and we do biology focused lessons with those students. Okay. So what kind of exhibit, I know probably you might have mentioned this already, the kind of exhibit that you have, what kind of exhibit do you have currently? So currently um, we have our science on the sphere and okay. that's a giant globe and we are able to use uh, real live data sets um, hmm. and we, 
pretty much talk about the information. Um, it's the one that I like is the um, weather formation. So it's a month of current information and you can see like formations of hurricanes off the coast of Africa. You can see, you know, when we had our thunderstorm. So it's really neat that we put the students in there and they were like, okay, so we're going to look at the cloud formation for the last past month. And they'll be like, oh yeah, that was the day that it rained three days in a row. Well, you can see that front over Maryland. And so it's, it's just a chance to get some, some legs underneath that the things that kids are experiencing outside and then we can add some science to it. Um, in our lobbies, we have, we call them the interactives and what they are, they're touch screens. And depending on what the subject is, okay. we put content on these touch screens and the kids have headsets that they can put on and they can work through those touch screens themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so we have storybooks, we have um, one that lists all the African-American astronauts that have ever served in space and it tells facts about them. We have one that talks about the anatomy of snowflake. So it's just different. Um, fun things that kids can self-pace themselves through. Okay. And then, of course, the good old Legos and Magnaformers, we have those in play tables, and the kids are able to play and build. Um, it's funny, because usually the parents end up <laughs> building, <laughs> and the kids end up watching. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's This is a true story. Uh, I went to my daughter, so she's 16 now, so uh, we took her to University of Maryland uh, to uh, for one of the uh, you know open house that they had. So <clears throat> so I, while we wait for the main event, so they had the Legos <laughs> out for uh, you know the students you know to build, and there are different levels of the Lego you know uh, artifacts that they can use. So it's so interesting that to see a lot of parents, right? Instead of really the children really doing it, a lot of parents, they seem like they were more interested and they seem to be challenging themselves. I can just uh -huh. picture, I can just see the parents at the science center now doing exactly the same, yes. right? And what's funny is all of my furniture is small. It's made for little people. Right. So, you know, <laughs> You have six foot six men splayed out on the floor building Legos, and it's just the best. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so do you have? Um, so, I, I see that you also have like a an event at, at the uh, you know a planetarium show coming this yeah. December. Uh, do you well, it's past. It actually oh, was past. this yeah, past yeah. month. Yeah. Okay. We haven't okay. updated our website. That's okay. this week's to-do list. Okay. So we have a every other month um, sky show. And what it is, it just highlights the um, constellations, what you would see at that time okay. of the month in the night sky. Now that's every other month. We try to do the first Monday okay. and it's free to the first 150 people. Wow. So that's one of our um, free events that we've had sponsored by various corporate donors. Okay. And um, so this week and next week, we're showing our winter themed movies. Okay. So they, we are open um, Wednesday and Thursday of this upcoming week. And we're open on December 17th all day. Um, and we're doing double headers. So you'll get two movies for the price of one. Wow. And then we will be doing some type of winter based, um, just artsy craft thing in the lobby where our participants can make and take, just have something fun to do. Okay. Um, so we try to match activities with the movies that we're showing. So in addition to the Legos and the interactives and um, the family has something to make. They would choose. Do you have uh, something for the grown ups like uh the special events for the grown-ups, uh, not just the students, right? <laughs> well, we have uh, we have a few senior community centers. Okay. And they organize trips. Uh, we do have grown-up content. We have uh, movies um, like Dream to Fly talks about you know aerospace. Uh, we have D Day, so we play that movie. Um, 
in remembrance of D-Day. We have a a really cool social studies movie, Lewis and Clark, and that's definitely like a history buff person's okay. movie. Yeah. And then we have our higher science movies. Okay. And we will couple those. And those are nights when we mainly have adults. Okay. So we just try to, we do mix up the offerings. And okay. when you go to our website, we have synopsis and trailers. So you can see, oh, is this, you know, a date night or is this a family night? Okay. And how much, uh, it, so there is a cost to it, uh, to this? How much is it uh, for yes, adults? For the- uh- for adults, we charge eight dollars a ticket. Okay, uh, and uh, you know what about for children? Uh, let's say under you... three are free. Okay, okay. And your operational hours is from what time to what time? Um, we open at six p.m. and we close when the last person leaves. So sometimes when we're doing the science on the sphere presentation, right, and the conversation gets good. We look up and it's the adults talking and the kids are like on the carpet. It's like, we have school tomorrow. Can we please leave? So, you know, <laughs> 9 o'clock. Sometimes we've gone to 9.15. So okay. um, I try to keep it informal. I let our guests, for the most part, carve out what the evening's going to be. Mm. Like we have our set movie that we show, but then, you know, they can play in the lobby as long as they want. We do the Science on the Sphere Sphere Live presentation. And I find that that space prompts a lot of questions and a lot of conversation. And the time kind of just flies. Right, right. So, But in- I have to say, the drop dead time actually is 930 because building service will start turning the lights out on us. So, yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so in terms of uh, for uh, people that are handicapped, uh, does the science center, is the science center accessible uh, for wheelchair accessibility? Yes, okay. we have wheelchair accessibility. We have the designated seating. We also have accommodations for our, our hearing impaired community. Oh, nice. um, we have the the um, their little hearing devices that people can check out. Um, okay. We also invested in, and I don't know how the technology works. Okay. But we also have a tower right. that someone can sit beside them okay. if they're hearing impaired. Okay. Okay. Um, this is really, really uh, awesome. Um, you know, a lot of things, um, you know, that we often forfeit is, you know, our community, we don't know about, you know, the phenomenal things that is happening or taking place right. or the phenomenal you know, uh, activities that is actually taking to place or the facilities that we have, like the like the science center, which is really a major. So uh, you don't have to travel to Baltimore, right? Right, right. <laughs> so it is right there, right in the community. Um, and uh, it is accessible uh, to anyone, to everyone, right? Uh, so one of the things that I also like about the facility is, it's not only just for students, but also for adults. <laughs> the adults too, you know, they can partake, right? Right. <laughs> and yeah. I try to have community programming. Um, with our partnership with the Space Foundation out of Colorado Springs, we've been very fortunate that every summer um, we're able to sponsor a space in the community event. And up until this past summer, we brought people in and we fed them dinner. Really? And then we show them movies and wow. they have STEM activities that they can participate in. And then we have a live audience with an astronaut. Mm-hmm. So we do have family and adult programming. Um, do, you, do you say that astronaut, live audience with an astronaut? Yes, we've oh been doing God. that since we opened. Woo! Except for the pandemic years. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to meet an astronaut, your favorite astronaut? Yes, I do. <laughs> well, guess what? This In November, I had astronaut Winston Scott come hang out with us for three days. Oh, my goodness. And he was able to talk to over 847 Charles County students. I missed that. Yeah, I'm so I, sorry. I, didn't I have to stop that. walking too hard. <laughs> but you know what? Okay, so... That is a segue to, okay. you said you missed it. As parents, we miss things because we're working. That's I was 
I was thinking about it when I was driving okay. today yep. about your questions. Right. And one of the questions was like something about something about the parents. Right. And as parents, we have to, if it's like calendar reminders or whatever, we just have to check in and see what's out there. Yeah. And I say that because I was sitting at my desk, I think it was Thursday. I started reading old emails, the ones that I didn't really pay attention to. Okay. And I realized I missed an invite to the Department of Education's You Belong STEM Summit. Hmm. And so there was a, a virtual link. So I linked in and it was amazing, hmm. you know, and there's all these resources that right. I can now use for our students of Charles County, but I just had to take a minute to dig around to see what was out there. Right. And I, and I feel like that's what we, we need to do. And it has to be a deliberate effort. Yeah, uh, that is true, true. Uh, because we as parents, uh, thank you for that input because it's extremely that advice, that strategy that you just shared, it's a, it's a critical one. So how did you arrive uh, to your current uh, role as the director of uh, uh, James E. Richmond Science Center? Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's one of those things, like I feel like my steps were ordered okay. because I had just finished my master's in education administration. I had planned on being a principal and mm -hmm. we were getting ready for for a summer academy and I volunteered to stuff envelopes down at central office. Hmm. So that's such a the tedious task. Envelope in the central yes. office. Wow. Yes. So it's a tedious task. And so my table, we were the liveliest because <laughs> you just have to figure out how to get through it. <laughs> and the assistant superintendent of instruction came downstairs to get a Coke. Hmm. Well, I believe our loud table caught her eye. And so she came over and she spoke and we were chit chatting and she, you know, thanked us for giving up our evening to help them get those envelope stuff. Cause it was for the department of instruction. So fast forward to the next day, my principal comes to my room and says, I got a call from our assistant superintendent of instruction. And she was asking about you. And I was like, Oh, oh. my gosh, I hope I didn't embarrass you. I am so sorry. Blah, right. blah, blah, blah. Right. He was like, he was like, no, Monique, she was actually impressed. And she wants you to interview for a job that's going to post next week. Wow. 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 That's so, uh-huh. So I interviewed for the STEM coordinator position for the county. Um, the position was created. They were kind of building the plane as they were flying it. Right. Um, that was the time that we were getting a lot of funding for technology Right. And do you remember when the buzzword STEM first came out? Everyone thought uh, it was just the technology, like absolutely. the smart boards. And right, that. Okay. right, I remember, right. So yeah. they were guilty of that as well. So I'm just like, okay, STEM, <laughs> STEM. Try to do research on it. <laughs> the majority of the research was on STEM cell, you know, advances. And I'm like, this is not what this is. So no, not what that is. <laughs> yeah. So... It was my making my way in that position, making a lot of contacts. You know, our robotics program in Charles County exploded. Yes. I mean, we just had, it was just amazing. Like everybody was just so willing. Like you guys were the reason I was so successful because everyone was like, yes, whatever you need. Yes, whatever you need. You know, so in building up that program, it was this grant came across my desk and I'd never written a grant. And the assistant superintendent, she paired me up with this older man who was so amazing. And we struggled through this grant and it was Senator McCoskey's earmark 09 grant. Wow. So we're like, Mr. Richmond, what are we doing this for? He's like, right for a planetarium. And I thought, man, this is a, look, but this is the thing. This is <laughs> Oh, I wasn't, God. I wasn't I'm so kidding. mature. Right. I was like, this is a setup. So when I don't get this grant, they can fire me. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Who writes for a planetarium? We didn't have a building. We didn't have any building. We didn't have God. land. Nothing. Look at, that. Look at that. And once again, you go out on faith, you right. do your best. Right. We got it. 
And again, guess what? Now you have a building, a sign center, right? Right, right. <laughs> so when everything started to come together, they, you know, were writing the job description for this position. And I was like, I want to help. I want to help. And they're like, no, that's conflict of interest because you are going to interview for it, right? I'm like, yeah. So in the meantime, I went on vacation with my sister. And while I was gone, they advertised that position. Wow. Advertised it, closed it, had somebody hired by the time I came back. Whoa. I was so hurt. Oh, so hurt. I can imagine. But he didn't last. Right. Right. Wow. And so they opened it up. I interviewed and I got it. Wow. It's amazing. So your dream, you know, um, was delayed, but it was never taken away. You still achieve your dream. Right. And so, I feel like because I went in with a good attitude, like I was hurt. Attitude. I was really upset. Right. But I just went back to work. And that was my time at the, as a science specialist because I was one both jobs, remember? Right. right, right. And I just threw myself into it. And the person that was hired for that didn't last but eight months. Wow. And I just was like, if I would have went in there with a stinky attitude, an attitude. a chip right. on my shoulder, right. I wouldn't have gotten this. So. So that's a lot that we need to learn from that, that experience of yours. And uh, uh, one of the takeaway that I, I will say, you know, it's like when you uh, you're confronted with a disappointing situation like that, uh, you, you just have to have a, a good attitude right? You got to put your head up. Uh, even if you have a negative attitude, transform all that negative attitude, all that negative energy in a positive direction. Right. You'll be amazed uh, right. what will come to pass, just like you're a living example. Of right. That. And let me tell you, I had a, a lot of negative energy and I was like, <laughs> I am going to show them the mistake they made. And right. that's why I was just pouring into that <laughs> science specialist. I was like, I can do it. I'm going to do both. I'm do STEM and science. Oh, yep. I love that. I love that attitude. I, I really do. I think we need to learn a lot from that because I think what happened also with, among our, in our community is like when we're confronted with a negative news like that or negative situation like that, it's easy for us. I guess it can be anyone, actually. It's easy for anyone to sort of go negative. But having to convert that energy, right, that negative energy into a positive, you know, um, you know, uh, product or something or right. effort, work, I think it can transform even the very situation that one is really going through. Thank you for sharing that. I really... I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. I have another question. Um, I know we're running, uh, uh, you know, um, close to time at this point. Um, I what, mean, that's. <laughs> um, I mean, that's fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't good. know what your time is like. But, <laughs> I, I, you know. I am. I, I am. I am good. Uh, um, what is your uh, What is your take uh, on the state of STEAM education? right now, especially in our community. Um, what's your take? What's, uh, do you think is good? I mean, some people, for example, feel like there's no shortage of <laughs> STEAM workers, right? People with STEAM background or STEAM education. Um, uh, so we don't have an issue whatsoever, uh, especially within our own community. Um, so what is your take? I know my take. I mean, my take is that, you know, I feel like I read this article a while ago uh, that talks about the media salary of people with STEM degree is $91,000. And I know the numbers of, uh, you know, my, my community being represented in the STEM field. And I'm right. wondering, wait a minute, are we leaving money on the table? <laughs> what is your take? My take is exactly that, okay. that our community were not adequately represented. And 
it's I feel like it's a threefold approach. One, it's an educational approach. We have to stop using math as a gatekeeper mm-hmm. because people can be very good at, at STEAM in the context of what they're doing. Mm-hmm. So you want to hang out these subjects as as standalones. But just think about cooking. Mm-hmm. You're using science right. and math and art because if you're baking, you are coloring icing and that's chemistry and you're making these beautiful creations absolutely (laughs) that's in context so i feel like one education we have to look at our approach and in addition to meeting students where they are once we meet them where we there they are we Hmm. need to understand where they are and actually work to get them to do the things that they know they have to do, they can do, it's just a different approach. So it's an education thing. And then also it's a family value parental thing. You know, it's great that your kid wants to maybe be a doctor or a lawyer, because that's maybe the way you think you're going to have a good living. But even some of the STEM technical fields, those technicians are are making seventy, eighty thousand yeah. dollars out of tech school. Yeah. So it's just reimagining what track is the good track for our kids. Yes. They may not go to a four year school. Yes. They can go to an internship, get some classes, and they're making more money than they ever thought they would make. Hmm. And then lastly, it's what and how corporations. Hmm. view who their STEM professionals should be. Hmm. I personally, when I first started as a STEM coordinator in 2010, when I had to go to events, it was so intimidating because Hmm. it was always me in a room full of white old men. Hmm. Fast forward 12 years, I'm looking at a conference. Hasn't changed that much. Hmm. There's a few more, you know, African-American males, a few Indians, but I feel like it's nowhere where it should be. Yeah. You know, I feel like in the beginning, the funding that was available, we did a lot of exposure events, but there was no follow-up on the excitement that you sparked in those kids by having them do robotics or sea perch wow let's let's wheel that back and put it inside of a classroom and make it applicable so they can see themselves in other areas Hmm. you know so i i feel like we still have a lot of work to do Hmm. yeah yeah i uh, i i think i want to piggyback on what you're saying because last weekend um okay so my daughter, she is interested in STEM. Uh, as a matter of fact, right now she's considering uh, like mechanical engineering, uh, possible mechanical engineering, or um, you know, uh, a program that actually focus on AI. So, um, so we have been going to different colleges, actually, just shopping. <laughs> so, but the price. You have sticker shock yet? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to mention that, right? <laughs> so, um, so, uh, but, but one of the things that we are doing to expose her is um, so there is this program, scholarship program. I I want to put a plug for uh, Westlake High School um, because Westlake High School. Um, I don't know who is in charge of that program, but I would like to talk to someone who basically has been given, you know, information because I see it, right? Because my daughter goes, you know, and now I'm putting myself out there, but I'm doing that because I want to share some good stuff and hopefully, um, you know, it will carry some weight. So, There is this scholarship program that is being offered by this uh, individual and his wife that founded a company 
<laughs> right? A tech company. So, but so they have a summer summer camp, and uh, so they basically they were providing some information about the program, and and so we decided that we were going to we were in the background while she was attending. I mean, I was looking at all those students, over 400 students. I, Ms. Wilson, I am uh, Monique, I'm not kidding. I'm counting my hands and my fingers, how many black kids, apart from my daughter, about five. And I'm wondering to myself, I'm saying, um, well, guess what though? Um, like for example, in my school right now, most of my students are African Americans, right? And I know I teach them, and most, and some of my classes, physics class, I teach physics class, and I teach chemistry class. Apart from my class, most of my students are African American women. So I'm just thinking within myself. I'm thinking. I'm saying, where's the representation? I, I I just I I am sort of uh, dumbfounded, you know. I don't understand, but I want to put a plug out for Westlake, um, you know, for sending that information because we follow true on that, and and I'm hoping that you know that is what every high school, every middle school, every elementary school, somebody has to take the the ownership right of this because Charles County I mean most of I mean our population has gone up mm -hmm. especially here in Waldorf and right? you know and that's the thing like I don't know I feel like maybe I know what I'm going to do when I retire because when you talk about the scholarships and you know somebody putting it out there for you um for my youngest, I finally got the formula down. Mm -hmm. And you have to start looking for scholarships in their junior year, like yeah. you're doing. Yeah. All right. And then once again, that doggone calendar, I would put the name of the scholarship, if she was eligible for it, on the calendar in the month that it was due. You know, and it's like a second job. But then once I did that, I was able to share with all her friends. Mm -hmm. And the girls did pretty well with scholarship money when they left for school. Hmm. So yeah, it's good that those things are out there. Um, but it just still resonates in me. Like what is happening to us and our males yeah. that they're, they're not showing up? Because I meet so many smart kids in this position. Yeah, I mean, just lovely kids. And they're bright and they can do the, the questions and the answers and they're able to deduce and work with the math. Like what is happening? And that's what keeps me up at night is I'm, I'm tied to the science center now because in my other roles, you know, I could visit classrooms, Yes. but I'm just like, what is happening? Yeah. You know, because I see it when they come visit. Cause I actually had Westlake here last week. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. We had a great time. And the one lab that we did, it usually takes 90 minutes. Yes. Those kids were so bright. We had 15 minutes to kill. So we went into the restroom and let them see the gym, you know? So they're there. Yeah. Well, I will tell you one of the things that I'm doing for my son. I have this conversation with my son. Um, he, he was interested in sports. Uh, so... I had a conversation with him. I said, well, I, I really, I think you can be anything you want to do. You can be anything that you want, that you put your heart into. And I'm not going to discourage you about playing, you know, whether football or basketball. But I really would like to give you the stacks. Here's the statistics. Uh, among all this, all of your peers that have gone to play, Imagine how many percent, what is the percentage, less than 1% that have really succeed, succeed and become like so successful like LeBron James 
And at mm -hmm. the same time, um, you know, um, they have lasted a long time and not getting injured. But right. you have to think on a long term, even if this is what you are going to do, you have to think about, you know, what kind of career can you have that will make you relevant, that will continue to help you so that, you know, you're able to provide for yourself and your family, right? That is critical. And right now you have to look at the, the type of jobs that actually that will uh, that it's really going to uh, that is sustainable right and and those jobs are the, are the stem jobs so one of the things that my son and i are talking about is like the kind of movies that we watch science fictions right i like i want and i tell him if i was to do it again i would like to be an astronaut so guess what my son that is really something that he's vying for right because oh, really, that is great. That so, just gave me chills. Oh, so, so I, and I think that those kind of conversation we need to have with all of our children. Um, one of my daughters have gone actually gone into nursing school. She's a, she's going to graduate in spring, right? Congratulations! Thank you. As a nurse, uh, so that is the kind of conversation I think. We cannot just leave it to happenstance, right? That the children are going to make the right type of choices. We have to show them. And the other last point that I, I know this conversation is not about me, but uh, I was inspired. I went, and that is one of the reasons why I love your center. I, I love what you're doing. I'm, I'm not kidding. I, I, I'm not joking. And it inspires me and it excites me, especially the story of hearing uh, you know, parents and their children. Even though I know the Lego thing, the children, the parents basically <laughs> decide to really indulge, overindulge. But the idea of parents getting or being part of the activity that excites me because it reminds me of another experience that I had last summer. My son was in. Remember, I told you my son was interested is interested in sports. So we decided to put him in, the, and he loved track and field. So we decided to put him in this club in Charles County. So, and now guess what? <laughs> it is a commitment for parents because now we have to oh, yeah. <laughs> take them all over the place. Monique, in the middle of pandemic, you will not believe it. The number of parents that I see at the sports stadium with their children, bringing all their children for this track and field is just amazing. Then I started thinking to myself, why are they excited? Why are parents not excited when it comes to STEAM or STEM? Because sports, it's instant gratification. <laughs> STEAM is the long haul. You got to commit and grind and grind and grind. Oh my God, what you are doing, I'm not kidding. What you are doing at the Science Center, um, I just want to commend you. Um, I, I think you're doing a phenomenal job. Uh, again, we in education, I don't know, uh, this is what I believe. It's just one student. We're in the, we're in the business of changing life and building minds, right? Uh, one student at a time. Two but a time. Uh, yeah, one student at a time. But, um, you know, I would like to, in, you know, commend you for all the wonderful work that you are doing. Uh, the other question that I really uh, have, I know I need to, how do we empower the youth in our community and build that capacity? Because you asked a question earlier about the young man. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your thought? How do we how do we reach them? I mean, okay, so this is not a very popular opinion. Okay. However, I, and especially with the teacher shortage, somehow we need to get more teachers that look like us in front of our, our kids. Because if you don't know, it's very, I feel like even the best person with the best intentions, all the training, you still just don't have an understanding of who's in front of you. Hmm. 
what their values are, what their family dynamic is like, what their needs are, how they learn. You can learn that. Yeah. But, you know, it's like I can walk into a classroom and see one of my teachers getting ready to step in it with a group of African-American males. I can walk over in two minutes. It's smoothed out and they're ready to work. It's those things. And also letting them know that failure is not the end. It's just the beginning of a different path. You know, we have to take away this idea of perfection. We have to take away the idea that if you're not getting straight A's, you're not good enough. You know, just real talk about letting them understand that they are valuable. They are worthy. You can do anything you put your mind to if you have a plan. Hmm. And if that first plan doesn't work, work on a second plan. You know, and our building capacity is one, having an understanding that there are so many different types of jobs in STEAM that don't require a master's and a PhD. It's still going to give you a good lifestyle. Um, and then we need to also learn some financial responsibility, like understanding the value of money, good yeah. credit, a good name. It's a, it's some character education, it's some parent boot camp, and it's some um, education reform. So, so that's I, just my opinion. So, uh, I, I did any, uh, any, any, you know, moves in that direction as it pertains to this issue in Charles County that you're aware of? Any groups at all that it's leading? Uh, well, or if you were to give an advice uh, to men uh, <laughs> or um, women and parents out there, what advice will you give them in order to, uh, because I, some, I really feel you know, uh, everything you said is right, but but I feel that we parents we play a major role, right? Um, so, I mean, well, it's gonna take some sacrifice. Okay. Um, as parents, if we see our school district going down the wrong way, it takes organization takes somebody being willing to speak up and press and press and press. Okay. Um, this is tough about bad mouthing my employer. Uh, um, <laughs> no, you're not. You're just you're just contributing to a positive dialogue. And 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 you know, you're trying to make uh, you know some suggestion being a, a woman of African descent, a woman of color, as to how to reach, especially if they are serving our community, our population, look at our population, there's really almost half or not even, or maybe a little half, more than half of the students of Charles County. So it really behooves them. I just feel like we need to show up. We need to show up in the good times, not just in the bad times. We need to show up and let people know that what we're sending to school is our pride and joy. And if something's not working, let's try to figure out what can work. Yeah. We need to show them that we may not understand the jargon, but we understand the idea behind what needs to happen and what's not happening. Right. I think just the biggest thing is as parents, we need to show up. Okay. You know, you can't no longer gone are the days where you can send your kid into mm -hmm. the school building right. and mm -hmm. you can have that assurance that the person standing in front of them for eight hours a day is doing their best. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how to, I think I need to shut up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I totally understand. Uh, the last question I know I've taken so much of your time in terms it's of it's fine i uh, i, I this, enjoy this it this is good uh, okay um but again i don't i don't want to take advantage of your time at the same time uh as a person of color i understand the importance of commitment 
uh, to the success of diverse population. Okay, after all, for me, we live in a diverse community, but why is it that we're still struggling? I know maybe I'm asking the same question in a different way, but I guess the reason why I'm really asking this question has to deal with diversity. As, as you know, we're right now, I mean, diversity, equity, and you know, uh, it's extremely important for us, but um. In, in a country like the United States. I mean, I think maybe, I guess maybe also my, I'm trying to hint in regards to the employers, right? Uh, to me, I feel like if there's a concerted effort to increase the number of minorities, right, in or underrepresented in, <laughs> in, uh, in, in the STEM fields or career paths, I think it's doable. But it's for me, I see that we're still struggling. I mean, I... <laughs> you know what my take is on why we're still struggling? So this has been a national conversation for about 10 years, okay. 10, 15 years, because original engineers, mathematicians, all the STEM fields, they're aging hmm. and they're retiring. Okay. And there wasn't a push. And so now we're playing catch up. Wow. However, I personally feel starting with us at our age, it's going to take a little longer until that population who holds the guidelines and the hiring that are on the boards that are doing this, making the legislation until those shades shift, we're still going to have this inequity. But as you and I get older and we move into different positions where you can make policy change and hiring protocol changing, I'm hoping the shift should start happening sooner because the people that held all the power are now retiring and, you know, leaving. Yeah. And so you have more of the biopic community rising through the ranks, Yes, but we just haven't gotten there yet. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and in regards- That's just to, my opinion. Yeah. It's a, it's <laughs> it's a, a time thing. Uh, yeah, it's a time thing. I do see, I see, I see that. Um, I see your point. Uh, in regards to, let's say, if you were to give an employer an advice, an employer that is interested in bringing more minority into, you know, to, you know, to, I mean, to, so that they can represent that, you know, show or demonstrate that there's their, their population or the demographic is diverse and, and there's equity. Uh, what advice would you give? Any advice whatsoever? Um, because I, one of the things, uh, so take for example, one of the, for me, I've even thought about one, one thought that it's really, is really sort of of interest to me. Uh, the biggest challenge that I have is how to go about doing it. And that is to really start a, an organization that actually connects students, right? Literally, students to employers. Um, <laughs> because I hear, I see a lot of advertisements, right? Uh, and that connection can be as simple as internship over the summertime. You know, I, I think I feel like that there, there, there isn't there has to be a um, an effort, a concerted effort. And I don't know if there are companies out there. Well, look, for example, if I'm looking for a job, I go to a headhunter. <laughs> right. Right. Um, and that, that is one of the things that is, I, you know, that got me thinking. And also look at sports. I mean, <laughs> these sports guys, they have scouts that go around right that search i mean do we have that <laughs> I no. mean well i mean if you want to pay for it I, I know with my son my number three he um i actually got him i guess you would say a scout and we did his package for lacrosse because he has you know he's small in stature but he was amazing but you're, he was small and I knew he wasn't going to get a fair shake. So I got an agent, we got a package and they shopped him around. 
And so then when it was time to pick a college, he had good picks. So it has to be a deliberate effort, you know, and also too, like I think about what I'm doing at the science center. I, I handpick my employees hmm. and some of them have worked out. They weren't the best when they started, but it was like an internship type thing. They were student employees. And then I had two return as adults and now they're IAs and they're amazing. Hmm. However, if we didn't hone them and train them right. in their formative years, they would have never been able to make it when it was time to actually function as a full science center employee. So that idea that you're talking about the internships, it's very important and it's smart, you know, put them in that track, let them work with the company a couple summers and the hiring people can say, Hey, well, they know the culture. They know this, they've grown, you know? And so that is not a bad idea whatsoever, but yes, it'll take a company, someone being paid to make the packages of these students to get them into these STEM companies. Yeah. I mean, it's a great investment to me, I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. I mean, from where it's a value-added proposition for any companies. So uh, now we know. I mean, science and research have demonstrated, you know, uh, that, you know, the people of color are as bright and they have a lot to offer. Likewise, yeah. right? And economically, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Uh, so I, I I like what you're doing in your company. I mean, you are really identifying and you're training, you're honing their skills and you're offering them employment, right? Well, I have one, yeah, I have one student and I need him to like <laughs> make, make a video or something. <laughs> I was working late one day and he's hanging out in the lobby, you know, and that mother and me, I was like, um, do you need a ride? Who's coming to get you? Oh, right. no, no. I'm waiting for my dad. So a couple of days I saw it and I'm like, you know, just come in the science center. It's warmer. You know, so we started talking and he's like, oh, yeah. He's like, I really like astronomy. And, you know, I was like, well, come in the dome. And I put the stars on for him. And so I asked him if he wanted a job. Mm -hmm. Wow. And by this time he was, it was the fall of his senior year. Right. And he was like, well, I don't know. I don't have a ride. Like all the excuses. Hmm. So I'm like, okay, you can work when you want to work. Whenever you get here, you can work. Well, we had a conference and um, Maurice Henderson from NASA's daughter space center was okay. coming down to present. Right. And I invited him back to meet this young man, just, you know, so he could see somebody like him. And so the long story short, he worked for me his senior year. He graduated. He worked that whole summer. He did his first year at CSM. So he did his classes and he would work for me Monday, Wednesday, Friday at the science center during the day with all of our students. And it wasn't without angst because he's a teenage boy, you know, yeah. so he and I had our moments and, you know, later he said that I was really hard on him and he wasn't used to it, <laughs> but he appreciated the consistency. <laughs> I say all that to say he now works for the Secret Service and nope. helping Kamala Harris. Oh, raise the roof. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes. That is awesome. So that's my thing. It's like if you can just track kids and help them and don't give up on them. Right. They can do things that they never thought they could do. Wow. So that is remarkable. You have made not only do you direct the James Rich, uh, James Rich, uh, Richmond uh, Science Center, but at the same time, you are changing lives by impacting, you know, the career path and the choices that our young uh, students um, actually uh, make. Uh, in terms of their career path. I just want to appreciate you. I, I know I've taken a lot of your time. Uh, you could have been using this Saturday, you know, to do other things, but you decide. Oh, I did all that this morning. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. And that's the thing. Like, I've learned I have to be deliberate with my time. Right. I wanted to give you 100% Thank you. not having those towels that I need to wash hanging in the back of my head so all of that is done so excellent excellent thank you so much uh is there anything 
final thoughts that you want to share with uh, anyone, everyone, the community, uh, parents, and most especially the student aspiring uh, to major in the STEM field? <laughs> uh, STEM well, field. I guess the whole thing is don't give up. Just don't give up. Find a way. And also, you know, I'm located at the Science Center and um, my email is mwilson at ccboe.com. If you have any questions, you can email me. I take about 48 hours to respond. So if you don't get a response right away, I'm not ignoring you. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I, I am a community resource. I'm here to help. My goal is to help, you know. So my thing of it is I'm trying to secure my future because our kids are our future. So I guess it's kind of selfish, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is, well, don't feel bad because that is, uh, if you ask any African uh, mothers, that's exactly what they will say. Uh, we invest in our children because uh, our future depends on it, literally, mm -hmm. right? So that is... Uh, not a selfish attitude, but literally, not only the parents, but actually the community of future. The, the country. And that's the thing. It's like we <laughs> need to have a strong STEM workforce because we don't want somebody taking over our satellites. We don't want someone to be able to hack our bank accounts and we don't have the cybersecurity tech force Ooh. to overcome that. So, yeah. Especially with the competition. Uh, all across the world, mm -hmm. uh, right? At this point. Right. So we cannot. You're yeah, right. and and also too, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm starting to preach. <laughs> like our resources mm -hmm. need to stay here. My son is in a PhD program at the University of Maryland. Thank you. The roof. <laughs> right. However, <laughs> University of Maryland, Eastern Shore. Right. He sent me his his class picture wow why is it only him and another african-american male in this wow. program at a hbcu it shouldn't be that way <laughs> our, community, our community need to represent <laughs> yes we we need to represent because that program is spot on absolutely and he is learning so much hmm. you know but it's like yeah, we as parents, we need to. I would love for him, if it is possible, at your own time and at his own time, uh, to come onto this podcast, to come and talk about his experience, because that is also one of the things that I have planned for the future. So not only do I want to invite uh, people like you, the champions uh, in STEAM education and career, but at the same time, invite young people uh, in our community that are in the field of STEAM mm -hmm. so that the other young people in our community can see their success and see right. that this is a piece of cake. I know it's not a piece of cake, but you have to work hard on it, right. but it's doable. So right. if, if you think about it, uh, talk to your son about it, I would very much would like for him to be uh, part of uh, the In Touch uh, STEM career. Um, please. That would be nice because yeah. honestly, as I'm sitting here listening to you, in my head, I don't know the moment that he switched because he was the type of high school kid. I sound like I have no life. <laughs> but he was the type of high school kid. I literally had to sit on his bed and do my work while he was at the desktop to make him do his homework. Oh my, God. oh my God. You see what I mean? You see, parents, mothers, you rock. Raise the roof. I'm telling you, I'm not kidding. I'm sorry. I got kind of chills and excited. But I'm you know what? We're close. That was bonding time. Like, I used that as bonding time. He said I was harassing him, which I was. But... <laughs> He was, it was a struggle to get him through high school. He was parents, smart. Parents, he was just lazy. Parents, he just, parents, he just parents, parents, <laughs> harass. Parents, please harass. <laughs> but continue, please, as you were saying. <laughs> yeah, so he was the, you know, the football, the lacrosse. He was the jock kid. 
Um, so I'm interested in seeing what switched in him to make him decide to pursue his PhD in physical therapy. I'm curious. I've never asked that question. And I don't think I'm going to ask that question. If I can get him to come on, it'll be like a genuine, honest answer. And I, and I'll, I'll Thank you. And by the way, I'll ask it for you. If, if, if I'm honored and privileged for him to come on to the podcast, I will ask for you. But if I have a hunch, I think it's you. Right. That's for my own personal. Right. It is you. All those years that you've been harassing him. Right. <laughs> right. In a good way. Right. Yeah. I still harass him now. So that is good. That is good. That is a good. I'm, I'm telling you, that's a good note to sort of end this. I just want to thank you so much, uh, Monique, for coming. Uh, thank you, Monique. Um, the director of James Richmond Science Center here in Charles County. Um, I really want to appreciate you for coming. Uh, I just want to say um, this program is exploring the evolving world of science, uh, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics in underrepresented community uh, that includes the Blacks, uh, the Indigenous, and the people of color. Um, We'd like to remind everyone, STEAM is important in our community um, because our health, our economy, and future depends on the solid foundation and innovation and our peoples participating in the field of, uh, in the STEM field. Um, so as long as the STEAM, the innovation in STEAM continues, my job uh, on this podcast is to attempt to connect with men and women uh, in the field that are champions in the field of STEAM uh, to bring awareness to the benefit of STEAM careers uh, in our, you know, for our underrepresented community, and also to gain insights to inspire and support the creation of innovative solution that will enable sustainable development that will contribute to the positive change in our community through our active uh, participation. Again, I want to thank you so much, Moni, uh, for coming on, um, you know, In Touch, Think Career, uh, Think uh, STEAM Careers, uh, to talk about uh, the importance of STEAM to our community, and also to really uh, talk to us uh, about the Science Center one of the nuggets, the gold nuggets that we have here in Charles County. And every child, every student, every people of color need to be aware of it and need to come and experience, right? Yes. The wonderful thing that you have to, that you're offering each and every day and throughout 365 uh, days in the year. Uh, thank you once more again. And uh, I will be talking with you soon.